everyone, it's Mrs. Conway. Um, and today we're going to look at solving proportions. So we've solved equations where the coefficients are fractions. The difference with proportions is that the whole equation is fractions. Um, so your method of solving will be pretty similar, um, but it looks a lot different. So what we're going to do to solve proportions is you still could find a least common multiple, um, but I find it's easier to just multiply twice. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply, again, you've, it's, you still follow, keep following the rules of equations. We have to multiply both sides of the equation by something. So you can either find the least common multiple. So in this case, we could look at it and say, okay, we've got a three and a six. So six is the least common multiple of three and six. So we could multiply the whole thing by six. Or you can, and this might just be a little easier, um, you can multiply both sides by three to get rid of the three, which would cancel out those. So you'd have four equals three x over 6, and then take a second step to multiply both sides by the other, the denominator on the other side. So you'd have multiply both sides by 6. So that's 24 equals, and then these, this time these two cancel. So you'd have 3x. That, that is sometimes just a little easier because you don't have to think as hard. Um, some of you might be looking at that and going, wait, isn't this when we cross multiply? And yes, you might have had a teacher that shows you how to cross multiply on these. And that's not wrong, but it is a trick. And the problem with tricks a lot of times is we forget when we're supposed to use them. So in my mind, it's easier just to remember, follow the same rules. To get rid of division, we multiply. So we're going to multiply both sides by first the denominator on the left side, then the denominator on the right side. Now we just have a simple one-step equation. Sometimes it'll be a two-step equation, but this time it's a one-step. So to solve it, we need to get x by itself. So we divide by three on both sides. So eight equals x or x equals eight. It is important with proportions that you check your answer. Um, this one's probably okay because x is in the numerator, but anytime you have x in the denominator, like this one over here, you need to check just in case Sometimes you can have what we call an extraneous solution, and we're not going to really get into that. I don't think it'll even come up, but I just want to warn you because it will come up in Algebra 3, 4. Um, so x equals 8, so um, we just need to check this. If x was 8, then we'd have 4 thirds equals 8 over 6, and is that true? Yes, 8 6 does reduce to 4 thirds. If you divide both of these by 2, then you have 4 over 3. Our answer checks out. All right, so let's try another one. So this one looks a little different because now our variable is in the denominator. And like I said, that only comes, the only issue with that is you just have to check it at the end and make sure you don't end up with zero in the denominator because we all know that that is illegal. Um, so, and some of you might already see what the answer to this one is, but let's go ahead and again, we're going to start by, let's get rid of this n plus five first because it's probably the part that's the um, most confusing. So we're going to start by getting rid of n plus 5 by multiplying both sides by n plus 5. Now when we do this, these will cancel, so that's not so bad. That'll just be 4 on the right side. But over here, you actually need to think of it as we're distributing 2 to the n plus 5. So we could even maybe write that as its own step. We have 2 times n plus 5 over 10. Now yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll just do it right away because it'll get confusing. But that's, you could do that if it, if it helps. So you have 2n plus 10. So I'm multiplying n plus 5 by 2, both of them. And then we still have this 10 in the denominator. Now we need to cancel out that 10 that's in the denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides by 10. So those cancel and you have 2n plus 10 equals 40. And some of you also might have noticed right there, we could have reduced 2 tenths to start the whole problem. And then that would save us a little bit 
um, of work, but you don't have to. It'll still come out to the same answer no matter what. Now we subtract 10 on both sides. So you have 2n equals 30. Two. Just like any other problem, the whole goal is to make it look as much like a two-step equation as we can. So these first few steps here are just to make it look like a two-step equation. Once it's a two-step equation, you guys all know how to solve those pretty well. So now we'll just check it. Um, if we if we checked it, we'd have, does two tenths equal four over 15 plus five? Well, that would be two tenths. Does that equal four twentieths? And indeed, if we divide four twentieths, if we divide both the top and the bottom by two, we'd get two over 10. Or you could reduce both of those to one fifth. Either way, same thing, both sides, that's the right answer. Okay, so that's kind of a really simple example, more complicated example. Let's just do a couple more examples that might be even more complicated. See here, both of these have variables on both sides. So, um, but your process is gonna be the same. Same process for all these problems. First, multiply by the, den the first denominator on both sides. It cancels those out, y minus three equals, but then you do have to multiply this, two y over five. And you only multiply the numerators. You don't have to multiply the denominators because, well, that would be division anyway. Now we need to multiply by the five to get rid of the five. So then we distribute the five here. So that's five y minus 15 equals, those fives cancel, so you just have two y on this side. Now we have variables on both sides. So when we have variables on both sides, you have to get rid of one of them. Um, I've said to always get rid of the one on the right, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this just so you can see what happens. So if we subtract two y on both sides here, um, we have three y minus 15 on the left side, and we have nothing left on the other side. When you have nothing left on the other side of the equal sign, that does not mean it is no longer an equation. The equ equal sign does not go away. This is zero. So I thought this would be a good example just to show you what happens when you end up in that situation, because it might happen. So if you get rid of everything on one side of the equal sign, put a zero on so that you still have an equation, because now we need to finish solving it. Add 15 to both sides, 3y, divide by 3 on both sides. So y is 5. And then just a quick little check up here. If we had 5 over 2, does that equal 5 over 5? Well, 5 over 5 is 1, and 5 minus 3 is 2. So you'd have 2 over 2, which is also 1. So it does work out. Okay, so last example here. Kind of crazy looking. We have variable, like expression divided by expression equals fraction, but same process. Start by multiplying the denominators. When you do that, the same ones cancel. So we're left with just 2k minus 3 on the left side. And then on the right side, you have to distribute the number. So you have 3k plus 27. And then don't forget though, we haven't got rid of this five yet. So that five still is in the denominator of that fraction. Now we should get rid of that denominator by multiplying. So you end up with 10k minus 15 equals, these two fives cancel, 3k plus 27. Okay, now it's just a normal three-step equation. We have variables on both sides, so we need to get rid of one of them, minus 3k. We have 7k minus 15 equals 27. Now we need to add 15 to both sides. So that cancels 7k equals... I always like to check with these bigger numbers. 27 plus 15 is 42, which is good because 42 is a multiple of seven. And then last step, 
as always, divide by the coefficient. So k equals 42 divided by 7 is, so now we can just check our work. This one's going to be a little bit trickier to check um, because that's a kind of interesting expression. So we got 6, so you should have 2 times 6 minus 3 over 6 plus 9. Does that equal 3 over 5? Well, 2 times 6 is 12 minus 3 is 9. 6 plus 9 is 15. Is 9 fifteenths the same thing as 3 fifths? Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. So if we divide both the top and the bottom of this by 3, you end up with 3 over 5. So it checks out. Okay, and that's kind of messy looking now, but hopefully you see the gist of what we're doing here. First, so let's write down our steps really quick for those of you who like steps. Step 1, multiply the denominators on each side. Step 2, solve. And then finally, step 3, check. And make sure when you're multiplying those denominators that you um, are multiplying the same number on each side. And so you're going to have to repeat this two times. That's uh, two times. So um, you have an assignment on Delta Math to practice this. Um, go ahead and get that done. If you have questions, please come to office hours or I'm really available pretty much any time in the morning. You just need to email me and I can start a Zoom meeting. So get to work. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck.